Welcome to our tutorial on managing your technicians. In this video, we will show you how to enter technicians, non-tech dispatch columns, and set up your dispatch board. First, we will start with your technicians. If you are integrated with QuickBooks or Peachtree, you might already have some technicians imported from your accounting system. After the import, any new employee that you hire will be entered into ESC first, which will then copy that employee's information into your integrated accounting software. To enter your technicians, go to the Dispatch drop-down menu and choose Enter Technicians. This will bring up a window with a list of the employees you have in the system. You can edit these by double-clicking their name or add a new one. We'll start by adding a new technician. Click the Add New button at the top of the window. Begin with the technician's last and first name and then their dispatch name, which is how they will appear on the dispatch board. In my example, I've typed Randall as a tech's first name. However, I would prefer to see him as Randy on the dispatch board, so I will type in the name Randy for the dispatch name. The employee number will automatically be populated with the next available ID number. However, this four-digit number can be edited only at this time. Once you save this record, you will not be able to go back and edit the technician ID. The tech pager number is a field for reference only, where you can enter their pager or work phone number. Entering the technician's email address into ESC allows you to email the technician their dispatch information or important messages that you need to relay to them. It can be a regular email address, like tech1 at gmail.com, or it could be the technician's phone address, which is their 10-digit phone number, followed by their provider's address, such as at vtex.com for Verizon phones. Please contact your phone provider for this address if you are interested in sending them a text message. The skill level field is tied to the service request codes. If you rank your text with a skill number, it will allow you to choose the correct tech based off of the request codes you have on the dispatch. This is designed to be a number between 1 and 10, where 1 would be a novice and 10 would be an expert. The default department that you set for this technician will be the department that their invoices will be set to. For example, if this tech is set to the commercial install department, then when you invoice a dispatch worked on by this technician, the invoice will automatically be set to commercial install. This field will override the department you have set as the program's default. The member of crew field will allow you to group your technicians into crews. If they are always grouped together on a job, put them in a crew. You can only assign one crew to each technician, and just because you assign them to a crew does not mean they cannot be dispatched individually. To create a crew, open the first technician you want to add to this group and type in the name for the crew in the member of crew field, then click OK. When you edit or add the next technician for this crew, you will be able to click the drop-down arrow and the crew name you added to the previous technician will show as an option in this list. To delete a crew, simply remove all text from that crew and save the change. The route optimized source is for use with the mapping feature in ESC. If you have mapping enabled and you want to plot your technician's route for the day, ESC will need to know where this technician will be starting out, either from their home address or the company address. You can select their starting point from here. The Commission Code field allows you to assign a commission code to an employee so that they may earn commission on any sale they were involved in. They can earn a commission both as a salesperson or as a technician. Entering a pay rate for this technician and an overhead value allows you to calculate your labor costs in ESC. These will show on invoices and in sales reports so that you will know if you're making a profit on a sale or on a particular employee. The Schedule section of the Enter Employee screen will allow you to make this technician available for work on weekends or on particular days. When viewing the 7 or 31 day view of the dispatch board, you will be able to see who is scheduled for work and when by the shaded areas of the board. The other tabs in the Enter Employee screen are pretty much self-explanatory. The Personnel tab is all of the personal information you have on the technician, such as their contact information and emergency contact. It even has a spot for a termination date and a reason why you terminated them so that you can deactivate this employee and still retain their information. You'll also have a tab for Notes. If you want to record any important information or requests by this employee, you can enter a photo for this employee, which can be inserted into emails that you send from ESC. And finally, you can attach documents to this employee's profile, such as vacation request forms, insurance documents, or write-ups. Now that we have our technicians set up, we may need to set up some non-techs. Non-techs are columns on the dispatch board that you can use to sort and organize dispatches, but that you don't want to track time and costs for. To open the screen, you will need to choose the Dispatch pull-down menu, and then choose Enter Non-Tech Dispatch Columns. 
you will see some defaults such as unassigned, back order, and the service agreement column here. We can add a new non-technician by choosing the add new button at the top of this window. In this screen we only have two fields to fill out, an ID number and the name. You must enter a four digit ID, so for this example I'm going to stick with the pattern we have for the other non-techs and enter 7777. For the name I will use inspection. This can be used for the calls that need to be approved by an inspector before we're ready to complete them. Now that we have our text and non-tech columns, we can create a dispatch board. Choose the dispatch pull-down menu, and then choose set up dispatch boards. We can create a new board or modify the default service board. For this tutorial, we'll just modify the service board. To do this, highlight service and choose edit. On the screen, you'll see two columns. The column on the left is designed for non-techs. It already has the unassigned and service agreement columns in it. Let's add the inspection column as well. We will click on the last box at the bottom and choose the drop down list that appears. This will give us a list of all the techs and non techs available to be added. From here, we'll choose inspection. The right side of the screen is designed for real technicians, so let's move the back order column over to the left side. We'll do this by highlighting the back order line and clicking the arrow pointing to the left. Now the right side is empty, so we can select the technicians we want to show on the board. At the bottom of the screen, we have options for the seven day board. The schedule display is for the hours you operate. The intervals is how detailed you want the board to display. I like to make my board set in 15 minute intervals. The increment size is how visually stretched out the time intervals will be. For instance, 100% will display the dispatches and schedule much smaller than setting the board at 200%. Once you have your board set up, click OK. You can open the electronic dispatch board to view your settings by selecting it from the dispatch pull down menu or by pressing F5 on your keyboard. If the dispatch board is already open in ESC, you may want to press the F5 key to refresh the board with the new settings or select Refresh from the Activities pull-down menu on the board itself. You can adjust the settings of the board at any time to fit your needs. This concludes our tutorial on managing technicians in ESC. Thank you for watching.